All right, boys, welcome back to Star Spangled Gamblers. Obviously, we're um, Americans, but the biggest story in the world is from our cousins, big brothers, uh, and parent civilization over in the UK. Um, I'm talking about Queen Elizabeth, who um, just recently, I don't like euphemisms, I'll just say it, she just died. Um, I'm going to quote the BBC's obituary for her, classic American there, quoting the TV station and not perhaps the Times of London. And then I'm going to introduce our good friend, over in London who runs um, Smarkets book, Matthew Shattuck. You might know him as Shads, and we'll just talk briefly about the Queen's legacy. Um, so, quote the BBC, the long reign of Queen Elizabeth II was marked by her strong sense of duty and her determination to dedicate her life to her throne and to her people. She became for many the one constant point in a rapidly changing world as British influence declined, society changed beyond recognition, and the role of the monarchy itself came into question. Her success in maintaining the monarchy through such turbulent times was even more remarkable given that at the time of her birth, no one could have foreseen that would be the throne would be her destiny. Shads, you're joining us from London. You're wearing a Beto O'Rourke t-shirt the day after the regent or the queen uh, has passed on into the next life. Um, this is a very weird intersection of American and British culture, but I'm kind of liking it. But let me just ask you, do people go to work the day after the queen dies? Like what, what, what is, what, what happens? That's just a, it's a huge day. Um, well, here in London, pretty much everything's still going on. They've cancelled a load of sports for reasons yeah. which aren't entirely clear to me. So the Premier League's off this weekend. Seems like a bad decision. Um, but uh, politics is closing down for a couple of weeks, uh, although they're in the House of Commons uh, sending tributes. Um, uh, but there won't be any sort of party politics going on until after the funeral, which is probably about 10 days away. Uh, no, but as for now, things are continuing more or less as usual, a bit quieter, I guess. Um, got it, got it, got it. Well, um, let's let's keep this brief, but let's be uh, true to our purpose. So um, a lot of people are questioning the legacy of the monarchy and uh, the smartest exchange has a question, you know, pondering that. But let me say, like, I'm an American. As Americans, we really have a hard time understanding what a monarchy is like other than something that George Washington fought at some point in time in the past. Um, so I'm going to take a stab at it. Maybe you can tell me if the legacy is not right. But like I, I sort of when I when I see the queen or the king or the prince or whatever, like it, a monarch to me seems like like all the history and hopes of a people are like in their physical form and they don't really own their lives. Like the people own their lives and their lives are just required to represent all of the sort of aspirations of the English people or the British people. Um, so my question to you is, I don't know if that's true or not. So is it true? But secondly, um, you guys are offering a bet on whether or not uh, effectively the monarchy can or will carry on, uh, you know, with Queen Elizabeth gone. So did I get any of that right? And is there any actual uh, constituency for the people who are making hay on Twitter and on the news saying that the monarchy sucks, uh, English history sucks, Western history sucks, like we need to do away with this institution? Um, that, that's a lot. Do you want to just take the piece that you want to take there? Yeah, I thought that was a nice summary. Um, yeah, I mean, I think even amongst people like me who aren't particularly in favour of the monarchy as a sort of constitutional way of running the country, um, there was, there's absolutely no political constituency at all calling for um, the monarchy to be abolished and us to replace it with an elected president, even though that would give us something extra to bet on. Um, so, even and and you know i guess even those of us who would if we could theoretically replace it with a different system whilst the queen was on the throne and was essentially doing an excellent job in almost everybody's eyes it was a classic ain't broke don't fix it situation um so there's there's really i mean i think if you did opinion polls over here you might get 20 25 percent of people saying in theory yes i i would replace the monarchy with an elected head of state uh but that's not going anywhere anytime soon because i think the uh the new king isn't very likely to do anything very differently so i think we're we're stuck with them for the time being well so your your question was puzzling like all good answers it invited more questions which is i didn't think that the monarch had any role as the head of state i thought it was just like a ceremonial thing where they you know made people proud to be english and and um and then the prime minister just sort of did what he or she does she does now in this yeah instance. i mean there's some formalities that they have to fulfill in you know making speeches of parliament uh, rubber stamping legislation which in theory they you know they could refuse to sign pieces of legislation in the law but that's hasn't happened for uh, centuries probably um and the king charles isn't going to do anything differently there i mean there have been one or two occasions when it threatened to the situation threatened to 
in Parliament and in, in UK politics threatened to perhaps drag the Queen into making decisions about who to appoint as Prime Minister. Quite, you know, even back in 2019 when the Brexit fallout was was still a, a massive deal, um, there was the possibility that the Queen might be left in a very awkward situation, um, but wasn't. So it's a sort of last gasp backstop, constitutional backstop, which might be used one day, but hasn't for a very long time. Right. And so um, over its markets, um, your bet on whether or not there'll be a referendum on the monarchy, which, of course, presumes that there's a large constituency that wants to do away with it. Um, that's like a five percent underdog. Um, I think, yeah. I mean, I totally forgot we even had that market. Nobody's betting on it because uh, right. it, it isn't going to happen. There's nothing unless there was some enormous constitutional um unless yeah unless the, the new king did something very very differently unexpected or some other enormous constitutional crisis emerged which i can't even think what form that would take um right now there is no appetite whatsoever for doing anything about that so it isn't gonna happen so if the king was just kind of like weird and awkward and creepy and had like the wrong colored touring car or something like that wouldn't be enough to undermine the monarchy or if you know prince harry and Meghan markle came back and you know, the, the, no, i mean say you say is, yeah, say say he was presented once with some extremely controversial legislation passed by the House of the House of the Parliament that he has to sign into law. And let's just for example say he declined to sign that because he was so opposed to the legislation. That's the sort of thing that might provoke that, but that isn't going to happen. So, and then who is who is the constituency for the uh, you know everything British sucks because there was an empire and the empire is bad? Like, is that is that an actual thing or is that just an internet phenomenon? Yeah, uh, but most of those, certainly in the UK, have had the tact to shut up about it for the time being, although not, I know it's from uh, Twitter in the US, there's plenty of that going on, I can see. Yeah, um, yeah but I think mo most people who feel like that are maintaining a respectful silence right now. Not not all of them, there are some people who are determined to make a point about the empire, but, you know, most people are able to separate the uh, institution of the monarchy from the person herself and see that it's probably not appropriate to conflate those two things, certainly not right now. Sure, sure, sure. So um, as you go home for the weekend, I'm assuming that you take the weekend. Um, if you were to see like a, a comet in the air or if there was a like weird off season rain shower, are there any like signs and portents that go into royal transitions or, um, you know, is it just this is a phase of life and um, and we'll be back to normal in a few days? Yeah, I, I mean, it's not like I'm old enough to remember when Princess Diana died. And this place went nuts. I mean, uh, the UK, it was just a crazy couple of weeks of hysteria, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, this right now feels nothing like that. This is much more calm and settled and nobody's expecting any fireworks. OK, OK. All right. Well, um, I don't want to belabor the point. There are lots of people out in the world who are going to cover this story far better than we can at Stars by Good Gamblers. But um, I, uh, I I I'm a proud American, but I think that uh, the United States, the new world, North America, uh, we are greatly indebted to uh, the British people for institutions and traditions of liberal rule um, that really probably more so than anywhere in the world kind of hailed from um, uh, from your rainy islands. So uh, with all respect to the English people and the, uh, well, I don't know what the right words are, but uh, just very important. I think that we we cover the queen and thank you. We love it when we have you, Shads. Can you just remind people real quick where they can find you? And um, I'll wish you a good weekend. Yeah, if you want to follow me on Twitter at Shadzi or the sort of um, Smarkets politics betting account, Smarkets poll, P-O-L, uh, various latest um, market moves and so on on there if you want to follow us. All right, Chad, thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you sometime soon. Cheers, Alex. Appreciate it. Thank you.